The long wait is over. Who has the upper hand in monetizing gene therapy for sickle cell disease? CRISPR or Bluebird? Welcome to ShareTrek. This is your host Raj here. And today's topic is going to analyze the situation with CASJV and Lifegenia and also various other parameters for both CRISPR therapeutics and Bluebird Bio and we are going to decide which one is better. And one of the reasons why I'm making this video is also because there are a lot of investors of Bluebird Bio. At this point of time, they're scratching their heads and thinking, should I do a dollar cost average? Uh, should I sell uh, what I need to do? So the opinions I've expressed here are my own. They're personal opinions, not financial advice. Please do your own due diligence. With that said, let's get started. Welcome back friends. After years of research and development, the gene therapy landscape for sickle cell disease is finally seeing a breakthrough with the introduction of two pioneering therapies, CASJV by CRISPR Therapeutics and Vertex Pharmaceuticals on one hand and Lifegenia by Bluebird on the other hand. Both therapies have made significant strides in their development and commercialization, but the critical question still remains, who will dominate the market? This video explores the current state and potential future of these therapies, comparing their progress, market strategy, and challenges. I'm going to discuss the market landscape for which I'm going to uh, use a table, and that will appear on one side of the screen. You can refer to the table as I talk over it. Gene therapy has uh, long been heralded as a revolutionary treatment for genetic disorders like sickle cell disease and transfusion-dependent beta thalassemia or TDT. With the recent FDA approvals of CASJV and Lifegenia, the industry is poised for significant changes. However, the high costs and uh, complex regulatory environments present unique uh, challenges for these therapies. So first, let us talk about uh, uh, CASJV by CRISPR Therapeutics. As you can see in the table, um, it uses the CRISPR-Cas9 technology and uh, it's been approved for sickle cell disease and uh, beta thalassemia. With a price tag of 2.2 million US dollars, uh, it's uh, still less expensive than its counterpart. And the progress that it has made since its approval is that it has got five patients uh, from whom it has uh, collected stem cells and it's in the process of doing the infusions. And cell collections are also occurring for uh, CASJV across multiple regions, including the US, Europe, and Middle East. And in terms of market strategy, uh, CRISPR Therapeutics and Vert Vertex aim to activate 75 priority treatment centers globally with 18 active collection sites in US and more than 25 authorized treatment centers worldwide. On the other hand, if you look at the column for Lifegenia by Bluebird, its technology is cell-based gene therapy and it's approved for sickle cell disease with a history of vasoacclusive events and its price tag is higher, a tad higher at $3.1 million in the US. And in terms of progress, recently it completed the first commercial cell collection and Bluebird has over 60 treatment centers in the US. And if you look at the market strategy, their focus is on the US market only, with ongoing efforts to streamline patient access and address high costs through uh, government and private sector initiatives. It's trying to capture the US markets. And for market dynamics, uh, I would say that CASJV's market penetration uh, is significant. CASJV appears to be ramping up more quickly than Lifegenia, particularly in the US. And this is very critical given that Bluebird is only focusing on US. So I would have expected Lifegenia to be progressing much faster, but it's the other way around. Analyst from uh, Mizuo uh, noted that the number of cell collection and active treatment centers for CASJV is a positive indicator of its market acceptance. Additionally, Vertex has integrated CASJV's revenue into its annual forecast numbers, sales forecast numbers, suggesting confidence in its commercial success. Because the, once the numbers are started to be reported, for CASJV, they will have to report every quarter and every quarter they would like to see incremental numbers out there. The fact that they have included a category called CASJV shows their confidence that the product will be successful. And um, when you look at uh, Bluebird's strategic positioning, Bluebird faces significant hurdles in the US market primarily due to the high cost of Lifegenia and the complex regulatory landscape. The company's efforts to streamline patient access through initiatives with centers for Medicare and Medicaid services highlight the systemic challenges in making gene therapies widely available. Despite these efforts, the high price remains a contentious issue among stakeholders. 
And uh, Vertex Pharmaceuticals has reported a 13% increase in product revenue in the first quarter driven by its cystic fibrosis treatments, while CASDEV is expected to contribute to the overall annual sales forecast in the second half of the year. The majority of Vertex's revenue still comes from its cystic fibrosis products. This indicates that while CASDEV has potential, it is still in early stages of its market journey. Now, if you look at the same CASDEV from uh, instead of from Chris, uh, Vertex's point of view, but from CRISPR Therapeutics point of view, it's going to play a big role. It's going to generate big revenue for CRISPR Therapeutics. So that's a very big positive for uh, CRISPR Therapeutics. Bluebird's situation is comp uh, complicated by its exit from the European market for beta thalassemia gene therapy Zinteglo due to pricing challenges. The price was too high. EU wanted it to reduce the price. Rather than reduce the price, they decided to get out of the market altogether. This decision underscores the difficulties of achieving value recognition for high-cost gene therapies in the different markets. So this is a lesson, universal lesson for all gene therapies. And even Jeff Galvin of uh, Altimmune was uh, alluding to the fact that cost is high for gene therapies. And uh, as a result of which, I think we have to look at lower cost solution. Recently, I had uh, interviewed uh, Dr. Eric Arts from Western University uh, to talk about HLP. And he was also uh, talking about the fact that he doesn't want to take a gene therapy approach, basically because gene therapies become very expensive to manufacture and therefore penetration is difficult. So I think that we have to keep that as a universal lesson. Now, there are various ways of reducing the cost for uh, manufacturing uh, these therapies. One could be the scale at which you do the operations. Larger the scale, the lower the cost because fixed costs can be add, uh, attributed. You could also find alternate ways of manufacturing these uh, therapies. So that's the uh, way in which the cost could be reduced. We'll have to see how CRISPR therapeutics works around this. But cost is definitely a big factor. Now, in conclusion... I would say that the race to monetize gene therapy for sickle cell disease is heating up with CRISPR therapeutics and Vertex pharmaceuticals seemingly taking an early lead with CASDEV. However, Bluebird Bio's life genia remains a strong contender, especially as efforts to streamline access and reduce costs continue. The long-term success of these therapies will depend on their ability to navigate complex regulatory landscape, address pricing challenges, and achieve broad market acceptances. The competition between CASDEV uh, and Lifegenia marks a significant milestone in the commercialization of gene therapies for sickle cell disease. As these therapies continue to develop, their impact on the market and patients' life will become increasingly evident. The journey has been long, but the promise of this groundbreaking uh, treatment is now within reach. Now, having covered the area of just CASDEV for Bluebird and CRISPR therapeutics, let us zoom out a little bit. Uh, in, in terms of the therapy, I think... CASDEV has got the upper hand, and in terms of strategy and execution also, CASDEV has the upper hand. Their Middle East operation itself, I think, is going to be a blockbuster for them. And then they have Europe operations, and then they have U.S. operations. So CASDEV, hands down, is winning as compared to Life Genia, in my personal opinion. Now, having said that, let us look at the balance sheet. CRISPR Therapeutics has got a heavy balance sheet with lots of money in it, whereas Bluebird Bio is struggling. It may do more equity dilution, and uh, it's in a difficult situation. So that's another fundamental uh, difference which makes CRISPR still the winner. And then if you go to the next level, let me tell you this thing, the way I understand pharmaceutical industry or gene therapy industry or healthcare industry is that any pharma company worth its salt should always have a huge pipeline with many preclinical and uh, phase one clinical and phase two clinical and phase three clinical candidates at play. It takes a lot of money, it takes a lot of effort, but that's how uh, a pharmaceutical company can stay relevant in the market. If they start having a thinning pipeline, then their share price will lose value and they won't live long. So having said that, if I look at CRISPR therapeutics, uh, therapeutics pipeline, for its size and age, it's pretty rich. There's plenty of therapies in the preclinical stage, uh, in the clinical trial stage, and also they have the approved uh, therapy with uh, CASGV. But if you look at uh, Bluebird Bio, it's totally anemic, apart from uh, a, a therapy, uh, one of the approved therapies, which is still in the pipeline because uh, they are looking for approval for the pediatric uh, age group. Uh, apart from that, there is nothing else in Bluebird's pipeline. So that kind of makes me feel that Bluebird is a one-trick pony, and once these uh, therapies are monetized, 
it doesn't have anything else it's just going to manufacture and sell them and one of the reasons why investors always look at the size of the pipeline and the spread of the pipeline between preclinical clinical and uh, the ones on BLA is basically because there is a patent that runs for each company's uh, therapy uh, uh, from its introduction and uh, once the patent is over they lose the monopoly over the uh, medicine or therapy and therefore they're not able to make profits from it the generics will enter into the market and that's the reason why the pipeline is very important so from that perspective blue uh, bluebird bio looks very very weak to me but in the future they can always add candidates into their pipeline and this is also one of the reasons why we should be optimistic that lots of big pharma will in a hurry pick up a lot of uh, gene therapy companies when they become cheap so overall when i look at the uh, big picture uh, clearly crispr therapeutics is a way superior company as compared to bluebird bio even though bluebird bio has a huge pedigree many years of existence before crispr therapeutics but still crispr is doing a much better job and it's much more dynamic and those who are holding bluebird bio shares you must be wondering should i dollar cost average should i cut my losses and run let me tell you i also have bluebird bio which i bought around 2500 shares at $2.50 it's loss making i am holding on to it because it's not too much of money from my perspective uh, and um, i'm going to see where it goes because it still has got these therapies and i'm thinking uh, the therapies within their patent period is going to still be valuable for any big pharma company which may want to take it and if a big pharma takes it over then their marketing capability the contacts and other things will help uh, make these uh, products much more formid formidable and much more competitive in the market so i'm looking at those uh, prospects also but of course everything i said here as i told you before is my personal opinion and not financial advice so please do your own due diligence i hope you enjoyed this video if you want more videos like this please mention in the comment also give me your thoughts about bluebird and crispr in the comments below and i'll get back to you again with the next video bye for now